Hi, welcome to Sweet Dreams Wellness Travel. I am Barbara Tuckett, your host and the owner of Sweet Dreams Travel. I am a wellness travel specialist. I believe that our mind, body, and spirit all play into our well being. And I create travel experiences which improve your wellness so that you return from your vacation with more health, more happiness, and more connection, both with those you've traveled with and also with your destination. In these episodes, I explore travel and wellness experiences, giving you ideas and recommendations, and also interviewing people who have first-hand experience of the places where you might want to go next. Welcome. Let's get started. Hi. You know, today might just be my favorite favorite episode that I have recorded. I am so excited about today's episode. I'm just, I can't wait. And you might know why. Um, It's because I get to talk about my river cruise and it was totally amazing. Although actually in some ways it was like, it was kind of difficult because I knew that you just didn't want to hear all about the basically a travel log of what I did, because even if you do go on a river cruise, you most likely won't go on the exact same one that I went on. And so me giving you a blow by blow day to day account of everything that I did is not necessarily going to be all that beneficial for you, because you most likely won't experience the exact same thing that I did as far as itineraries go. So even though I wanted to talk about uh, my itinerary from moment to moment, I refrained and I talked, I'm going to tell you something today that is, I think, more applicable and a better takeaway for you. So anyway, with that said, this is episode number 36 and it's entitled, What is the Big Deal About River Cruising? And Why Did I Sail on Ama Waterways? So let's jump in. First of all, I kind of want to talk for a little bit about how river cruising is different from ocean cruising. A lot of people are super familiar with ocean cruising. Either they've gone or that's just kind of the type of cruising that we tend to hear about. And so you might be familiar-ish with what it's like to go on an ocean cruise, but wondering how that is different from a river cruise. So I'm just going to go through a few things and kind of set up the expectation of what's different, what's the same ocean to river. Okay. So obviously (laughs) the uh, obvious um, difference is that you're sailing on a river rather than an ocean, but, and that really does make a difference. Um, The ship size for one thing, is usually between about 100 to 200 people. So some of the very largest river cruise ships are, will accommodate up to 250, but that is way rare. Mostly it's in the 150-ish range, most of the river cruise ships that um, are out there. So they are way smaller. Um, On a river cruise, the ships are really constrained, of course, by the water depth, in the rivers and the width. There are lots of locks in European rivers that the ships have to pass through and they are just a certain size. They are not super narrow, but they're, you know, fairly narrow. And um, in order to get through the locks, of course, the river ships have to be a certain width. And ours that we were on, it only had 11 inches clearance on each side of the ship. And that is pretty standard for a river cruise ship. They need to be small enough to fit in between the locks. They can't be super deep um, because of the river depth that they are going to be sailing in. So, um, and then of course, by contrast, ocean cruise ships are huge and they often accommodate several thousand guests. So just in terms of size, that is one big, huge difference. Another way that ocean cruises are different from river cruises is in the onboard activities. On an ocean cruise, um, you have so many onboard choices of things to do. There's multiple pools, 
not just like one small pool or anything. There's like multiple options for pools. There are water slides. There are often movie screens with and theaters for big Broadway type productions. There are kids clubs. There are so many restaurants and activities, um, lots of ways to spend your time because you are dividing your time on an ocean cruise between days at sea and days in port. And so the, the ships want to give you plenty of things to do when you are at sea, um, as well as when you're in a different port. So in contrast, river cruise ships are way more low key than that. They offer, as far as amenities, like activity type things, they offer a sun deck um, up on the top level. It has a pool, which is kind of a smaller pool, but it is a pool. They have a track, like a walking track. Um, they have a gym, a spa and a salon, and then a lounge, which seats everyone. Um, I've included a picture of the lounge here, if you are watching the video. And the lounge is just kind of the gathering and entertainment area. There's not like a separate theater or anything like that. So way more low key on a river cruise ship than on an ocean. Um, I kind of mentioned this a little bit, but restaurants are a big difference. On ocean ships, there are so many places that you can eat on board all over the place. There are the things that are included, the paid um, that are already included in your price. And then there are also the specialty dining venues where you can pay extra and eat at lots of different other restaurants all over the ship. On river cruise ships, they have one main dining room and a specialty dining location. And that's, that's pretty much it. So um, it's a big difference in the dining. Ocean cruises are set up, like I mentioned and alluded to earlier, to entertain on board and also on land. And so you pay extra for things like specialty dining or drink packages that are on the ship and excursions that you can do off the ship. Depending on the river cruise line, you don't pay extra for any of the dining and only the extra drinks that you have between meals. So you don't have to pay for a beverage package, quote unquote. Also, depending on the river cruise line, your excursions are included and you're in a different port every single day. And sometimes you visit two ports per day. So you are spending far, far more time in your destination and less, way, way less time on board because you're just off out and about way more than you are on the ship. So let's go on to another question that I sometimes get asked, which is, I hear that river cruises are really pricey. Is it really worth it? So you might be thinking, I can visit Europe for a fraction of the cost. Why would I spend extra for a river cruise? This is really an awesome question and one that I am super happy to be able to talk about. Um, on my river cruise, I actually found myself thinking, I could have come to Europe and gone to all of these incredible little towns and areas all on my own, but how would I have even have known where to go? Just think of all the research I would have had to do to discover all of the gems that I get to experience all week long. And that is so true. I, I was just amazed and overwhelmed at all of the things that I got to experience on a river cruise that were just there for me. And the guides were taking us different places and showing us different things and talking about all these great things that I was just mind boggled by the amount of research, time, effort, and energy it would have taken me if I was trying to put together a land, like a similar land cruise or land package on my own um, without it being a river cruise. Um, just completely mind boggling. Um, so sailing through the rivers of Europe, you get to see castles and cathedrals and villages and countrysides. You find out about the history and the personality of these like great little places and you shop and you eat and you interact with the locals. It is such a personal experience in places that you sometimes had never heard of previously 
And now those places just become such a part of you. You just take a little piece of them away with you as you get to experience them. So it is just like an incredible, amazing experience. Another thought I had thinking about traveling around Europe these days is that traveling to Europe right now resembles kind of like trying to run through a field of landmines in terms of the health requirements and the protocols and everything that is required that you have to know in order and the hoops you have to jump through to get to all of these individual countries. So between like the different masking regulations, the vaccination regulations, the COVID testing, all of the things, it is so tricky to travel independently in Europe right now. There were places that we couldn't go into the shops unless we had an N95 mask. Um, We couldn't wear just a regular mask or a medical mask. We had to have the N95 one. And we would not have known that if the river cruise line had not made us aware that that was a possibility in some places. And in other places, they were fine with just regular masks. And some places we had to mask, some places we didn't. It was just, it was so... Uh, varied that it would have been really tricky to try to navigate all of that on on our own if we were just going on a land tour. So the cruise line totally keeps you up to date on the current protocols and the requirements. And it is so nice not to have to worry about little nitpicky things like making individual hotel reservations or restaurant reservations and requirements and things like that. Um, Just like amazingly Um, easy to travel on a river cruise rather than having to navigate everything on your own traveling independently. So another thought that I had was just thinking about this whole experience. Now, how much would it cost doing a land trip? How much would it cost if I wasn't on a river cruise to travel through the rivers and towns and countrysides in Europe and stay in five-star hotels with impeccable service? How much would it cost to eat every meal in a beautiful restaurant with gourmet menus, award-winning dishes, several course meals, and being waited on hand and foot with this amazing detail and attention to service? How much would it cost to participate in daily, personalized, curated local excursions? with a little free time to explore on our own. I honestly, it's just mind boggling. I cannot put a price tag on the value that it is to travel on a river cruise. I seriously, I just, I can't. It was worth every single penny that I spent. It was so worth it in my opinion for the experience that you get on a river cruise. So incredible. And I have to just brag a little bit. If you are not watching the videos, I got to put in all of these great pictures that I took, not all. I really took over 1,200 pictures. So this is only a small fraction of my river cruise pictures, but I was so excited that I would get to record this video and not just as a podcast, but also as a video and be able to throw in some of these great pictures that I took because I just loved, I loved it, loved it. All right. So let's move on and specifically talk about the river cruise line that I went on. Now, there are so many great river cruise lines and I do not and I am not meaning to disparage any of them or to say that, you know, I did the absolute best and nothing else compares. Um, I honestly feel that there is a river cruise line that fits everyone and my taste is not necessarily the same as everybody else's. So um, I am just giving you my personal experience from Alma Waterways. I love this cruise line. Now, I loved them before uh, just because of my previous interaction with them and working with them and booking um, other people through them and just all of the interaction that I've had with them. But since cruising on Alma Waterways, I just I have this immense loyalty and sense of love for them. So they feel like family to me. This company totally feels like this amazing big family. 
The staff is so warm and welcoming. They are just so great. Um, one thing that I really love is that each river cruise sails with a cruise manager. And that is not specific to Ama Waterways. That is um, any cruise line. They have this amazing person called a cruise manager. And this is one of the highlights of your trip because they have so much great local knowledge and they have attention to detail and they, their job is to communicate everything that's going on to the passengers and to let all of the guests know, you know, what they need to do, what they can expect, what's going on. And they just do such an amazing job. The cruise manager, this is so cool. They go with the guests who have booked a pre-cruise extension or a post-cruise extension. For every cruise, there is a couple of days possibility to fly in early and do a pre-cruise extension and a possibility to stay a few days after the cruise and do a post-cruise extension in a couple of different European cities. Some of them are the cities that you're actually starting and ending in, or sometimes they take you to another close by city and you get to experience those places. Well, um, the pre and post is not specific to Alma Waterways, but what is specific is that the cruise manager, that same exact person that is your cruise manager, they accompany the guests who arrive early or stay for their pre or post cruise extension so that your entire experience feels like so seamless and you have this personalized guide and this person who is there taking care of you and looking out for you. So it is, I just think that is like the most amazing thing that Alma Waterways takes care of you like from beginning to end, from the minute that you arrive until they send you back on your flight. And that is true. That part is true. Whether you book a pre or post cruise stay or not, they just, they totally take care of you. So I've included pictures here of the um, spa manager, the um, massage and salon person. I've included a picture of the cruise manager and some of the wait staff in the dining room. And then I've also included a picture of um, some of us on my cruise, me and my husband and another couple that we went with and our, a couple of our really great dining staff that were just for us. And they were fabulous. It was so great. Okay. So another reason I love on the waterways is because of the food. Now you would want to go to, re to Europe for the reason of amazing food. And if you are on a cr river cruise, you would really want to have amazing food along the way. And Alma Waterways did just that. They have won so many awards for their food. They are part of this prestigious gastronomic society, which is called La Chaine des Rotisseurs. And that is like a really big deal. Their food is amazing all the time. When we were in Switzerland, it had a Swiss feel. In France, it had a French feel. And in Germany, it had German feel. It was just so great. All of this local um, sourced food, it was just amazing. So everything from freshly baked breads, which was one of our favorite parts, danishes, um, all of those, like at breakfast and lunch and dinner. <laughs> they had amazing soups, salads, sorbets, main dishes and just absolutely melt in your mouth desserts. It was just incredible. The food is such a delight. I felt like every bite was amazing. It was just a treat and a treat to look at too. Just very, very well presented and beautifully plated. Just amazing. So another reason that I really, really love Alma Waterways is because of the wellness components. As you know, I love wellness and travel. I love the combination of finding your wellness and becoming more well um, as you travel. So each ship with Alma Waterways has a wellness host, which is a dedicated person um, just for wellness on the ship. They are the one that lead small group fitness classes on the sun deck at various times throughout the day. Sometimes it's yoga, sometimes it's stretching, sometimes it's 
um, more cardio or resistance band or all kinds of different activities throughout the day. Um, there's a gym on board, so you can go get a workout in if you want to, you know, in your own time. There are healthy dining choices that are offered at every meal. They have um, infused detox and gemstone waters offered at the hydration stations on board. And they provide you with a complimentary water bottle, which is glass, not plastic. Everything that they do is, just as a side note, is very, very environmentally friendly. Um, it was great. Uh, anyway, so they give you a glass water bottle in your stateroom every day, and they have water bottles available as you depart for every excursion that you can grab and put in your backpack or whatever you're taking off the ship with you. Um, they offer hiking tours, and there is a whole fleet of bikes that travel with the ship for biking excursions, and they have lots of biking excursions as well. So it's just like, I really, really love the wellness component um, on Ama Waterways, which is different from what other river cruise ships do. They don't, they, they have a few of the same um, amenities, but not, they don't have a focus on wellness like Ama does. Um, another reason that I really love Ama Waterways is because of the choices in shore excursions. Every river cruise line offers shore excursions so that you have a chance to do um, some amazing things in every port. So that is not specific just to Alma Waterways, but not every cruise line includes a shore excursion of your choice in every port. And not all cruise lines offer options of active, regular, gentle, and even some late riser excursions. So they give such a variety of um, the shore excursion options that you have. Um, I really, really loved the variety. And the hardest part actually is deciding which excursion to go on. <laughs> it's just, it was so hard. Sometimes I wanted to go on, there were maybe four offered and I really wanted to go on all four. And I just wished I had time to, to experience them all. So it's really, really fun to get to experience the variety of excursions and it's all included. Every, every port has an excursion included with it and you just get to choose that. They also are super flexible. So for example, let's say that before my cruise, a couple of weeks before my cruise, I booked all my excursions and I, you know, had it all in place. But then the night before the excursion, when I'm on the cruise, my cruise manager is talking through all the different things that are available for that next day. And I think, oh, I don't like the one I wanted as well as I like this other one that they're talking about. I can change at the last minute. I can even change once I get off the ship. If I want to get on a different bus or go with a different guide, um, I can change even super last minute. So it's really, really flexible that way and really awesome with the shore excursions. So I loved that. So now let's kind of switch gears a little bit. And I want to talk about if you are going on a river cruise, kind of some things to expect. Don't expect the level of entertainment that you experience on an ocean cruise um, because the evening entertainment often is just performance by local artists or they have an onboard pianist who is truly a virtuoso can play, I feel like, just about anything that you would ever think of. Um, but it's really, it's really a low key, it's just in the lounge, um, local entertainment. Um, don't worry about the climate feeling too upscale. You might feel like, wow, with all of that, um, really upscale service in the dining room and everywhere, I, it's going to be like more, uh, than more than just casual, how I normally dress or am. Um, we wore jeans and tennis shoes the whole week, the whole time. Um, evenings do have a slightly nicer feel, but it's not dressy or formal. It's not like this big formal thing where you have to dress up every night. They're, it's just a little nicer. Um, another recommendation is to dress for the weather because you're out in it every day. Every day you're out in the weather and walking in it and um, experiencing it or biking or hiking or whatever it is. Um, be so ready for whatever is going to happen with the weather. 
I would recommend always pack an umbrella just in case. There were days that we had no rain in our forecast, but we ended up with some rain. So um, just be ready for the weather. The level of activity is perfect for whatever you need. If you are active, there will be excursions for you and you can be active every single day. If you have health challenges or if you just prefer a slower pace, you wanna have lots of time to take pictures and different stops and just kind of meander along the way, but you don't wanna be rushed, then there are excursions for you. So everything um, in between, it's, it's completely customizable to your needs and desires. Another plus, there is no seasickness. I love this one because I tend to get motion sickness as I've talked about before. So these calm river waters carry you along just effortlessly and you don't have to worry about any Dramamine or seasickness medication at all. So just really quick, I promised you that I was not going to do a travel log of what I saw and did every single day, but I just wanted to talk about a couple of highlights. Um, my cruise began in Basel, Switzerland. We sailed to Strasbourg, France the next day. And then the rest of the week, it just followed with lots of small towns in Germany. We began on the Rhine River and then we crossed over into the Main River. And then there's a little canal that cuts through to the Danube. So we ended our cruise in Nuremberg, Germany. My favorite city overall out of all of them was Strasbourg, France. Um, I really, really love that the entire downtown area, which is called La Petite France, is a UNESCO World, World Heritage Site. And it was just amazingly preserved and just felt like walking through these narrow cobblestone streets and shops of 16th century Strasbourg. It was honestly so fun. The cathedral there is amazing. The chocolate and the pastries are to die for. And the town is already transforming into a beautiful Christmas market. And I went in, you know, November, the beginning of November. So they hadn't totally set up Christmas everywhere, but they were starting to, and that was really fun to see. Um, there were Christmas market towns throughout our cruise. So it wasn't just Strasbourg, Christmas market we could see everywhere. Um, I just wanted to talk about the German towns. There were just so many great highlights through the German towns. Um, it's really hard for me to pick one of those that was a favorite because they were just so fun. Most of them are all currently getting ready for the Christmas market season. Um, I really loved the little town of Volkach, Volkach, which is like a storybook village. Like it's just so pretty in Bavaria, which is the area of Germany that we were in. Um, a couple highlights from Volkhoek was the movie Chitty Chitty Bang Bang was filmed here. And one of my favorite things, which I just thought was so fun, was seeing the little, it's not little, the prison wagon, the actual wagon that was used for the children when they bundle the children up and shove them in the wagon. Well, that wagon is actually still on display outside the medieval torture museum here in Volkhoek. So um, I've included a picture of it here. Also, one of the best cathedral interiors that I saw the whole time, one of my favorites, was in Volkach. So that was really fun, too, to get to see. It, we saw cathedrals and um, oh, just amazing architecture all the way through. But I really loved um, the inside of this particular one in Volkach. So those were some of my highlights. Um, I threw in a few more pictures just for fun. It was really fun to go in the fall, I have to say, because there were fall leaves, beautiful fall leaves. I really, really loved the cobblestone streets. I was just so fascinated by all the different types of cobblestones that I saw. So I kind of went a little crazy and took pictures of cobblestone streets everywhere <laughs> because it was just so fun. It's just so different from here in America. Um, there aren't so many. There are some in the East, but not so many in the West. So I threw in a few more pictures just for myself, <laughs> but you also may enjoy them. Um, so have you wanted to go on a river cruise? I do know that several of you 
were not able to go with me, even though I invited and, and had some availability that you could have gone on this cruise with me, but it just didn't work out with timing wise and um, whatever with some people. And so they have said, oh, I'm so excited to hear about your river cruise because I want to sometime be able to book one. Well, if you've wanted to go on one, I'm going to give you an opportunity. I'm going to tell you about an opportunity that is coming up. Um, just let me pause for a minute and just conclude with my thought. What is the big deal about river cruising? Go back to that original question. Uh, if you can't tell, it was the entire experience. It really was. The whole thing was just absolutely incredible and amazing. If you have been wanting to visit Europe or Africa or Asia or even South America in a unique way, River cruising is the way to go. I feel like it's just so awesome. And there are river cruises in all of these places that I just named, including America. There are river cruises right here. If you did not want to leave the States, there are some really fun river cruises on um, the Mississippi River and on the Columbia River, anyway, on several different rivers here in the US. So um, lots of great opportunities to go on a river cruise. I have heard it said that oceans take you to countries and that rivers take you through them. And I really agree. A river cruise is such an immersive experience. It just totally immerses you in the culture and the town and the life that is going on all around you. So, like I said, um, several people had mentioned that the timing wasn't great to go with me on this river cruise, but they would really love to go on one sometime. And some people tell me, someday I really want to go. That's really on my bucket list. Well, maybe that someday is sooner than you think. I just received um, a notice about an amazing Black Friday deal that is coming up. And this deal is only good through the end of November. So it's got a really limited time. You would have to decide pretty quickly. Um, and it is on Alma Waterways, the same cruise line that I just got back from. And they've got some amazing deals on some of their sailings. So this is what it includes, just in quick, quick recap. It includes a complimentary upgrade to a French balcony or the best stateroom available. So you could book the very lowest category and you would always get upgraded. Um, it includes economy round trip flights from more than 20 cities. Yes, this deal includes flights, your round trip airfare, not just your cruise. If you didn't want your flights included, then there would be a discount um, taken off and you could get your flights on your own if you would prefer that. It includes the round trip airport to ship transportation. Um, that alone is worth, I think we paid $190 for the two of us to go round trip from our, from the airport to the ship and from the ship back to the airport. And of course it, that cost varies depending on how far away you are from the port at a specific airport and all of that. So that's not a, a complete price in every single city, but um, it would save, that would save you $200 just right there because you would get your transportation all included. Um, obviously your choice of excursions, like I talked about, we have through November 30th to book this deal. And I guess the most important detail is you're wondering what is this even good on? It is good for any sailing in 2021. I know we're like short on time for 2021, but there are still so many Christmas market sailings and um, different options for 2021 still. So if you have some time between now and the end of the year, you might want to look at that. But there are also, it's also good on a bunch of 2022 sailings. Mostly it's spring or fall sailings rather than summer, which are great times to go. I super, super loved going in the fall. So um, fall is an amazing time. Spring, one of the cruises that is offered is the Tulips Cruise. So you may want to think about that in the spring. Um, anyway, I just wanted to give you 
kind of a brief taste of and let you know that this is available. And um, the cost is $42.99 per person um, for this great deal. That includes your flights, it includes your upgrade to a better stateroom. It includes the transportation between the airport and the ship. And um, of course, the amazing cruise. So this is actually a better deal than what, um, if you had sailed with me on my cruise, this is a better deal um, that they are offering right now. It's the Black Friday deal. So I am so excited to get to offer it to you. Um, of course, if you are going in 2021, your cruise cost would just need to be paid all in full right up front. However, if you are going in 2022, if you choose one of those, you would just pay a deposit right now and then you would pay it off later. So um, I will tell you all about it next week, give you way more details. I will give you lots of different ideas for which sailings and which ports, which itineraries they're doing. And um, so anyway, this is just a sneak preview because I just saw it come through and I thought I would just give you a heads up that it's available. So if you would want to give somebody in your life a really amazing trip, you may want to think about putting a deposit down on one of these cruises. So just saying, it would be awesome. Anyway, thanks so much for joining me today. And hopefully you've enjoyed hearing about my river cruise as much as I've enjoyed sharing. And we will talk to you um, next time. Thanks a lot. Thanks for joining me today. If you've enjoyed this episode, please like, share, subscribe, or leave a review. If you'd like to contact me about a vacation, the best way is to visit my website, sweetdreamstravel.net. To connect on social media, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, or LinkedIn. See you next time.